All right, everybody, we're here at uh, episode 38. I have Jeff Cleary in here from khs &S Contractors over in Anaheim, California. Jeff has worked his way up into general superintendent over at that operation, and he's going to have a great story to tell today. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing well. Doing good, well. Thank good. you for having me. I, I feel honored based on the predecessors that have been sitting in this chair have watched your episodes and I'm honored to be in that group. So thank you. No, that's awesome. I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come in here and tell your story. And like we were talking earlier, the younger generation needs to hear these stories from guys that have all these years in the industry, you know, sure. to share that and they can get educated from it. So how many years have you been in? Wow. Um, I came in in 1985 as a first stage drywall apprentice. And, you know, so I'm, you know, been, what is that, 35 years? Yeah. Yeah. So, Shit, you're a journeyman now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a, been a good long, good long haul. Yeah. Yeah. And started at the very bottom. Who got you in? I, I did. Well, that's, you know, I was, I was kind of thinking about, you know, what that story was going to look like. And I'm going to go back just a little bit further. You know, my, uh, I've always had an interest in construction, even when I was just a little kid. Right. And, uh, my parents, um, who owned a restaurant in La Habra, California, there was a, an old shed behind the restaurant and an old group, maybe someone listening to this podcast might remember them, Yeoman Brothers Acoustical. And it was just these three or four guys that just did acoustical ceilings back in the you know, 70s and 80s. And uh, they would come in and eat, eat lunch and such at my parents' restaurant. And you know, I'm seventh, eighth grade looking for some work. And he said, I just come work with me. And so I was doing scrapping out and you know, I was remember I remember nailing on wall angle on some concrete walls, beating up my fingers, you know, what have you. Mm -hmm. And um, and so my parents' restaurant in La Habra was kind of like this hub of people that would just keep coming and going. And and um, in later years, I found out that I was actually serving coffee to Gary Jakes. I'm sure you've heard Is that. Is that name. right? And I didn't even know it for years. I was serving this man. I was 11, 12 years old serving Gary Jake's coffee. No didn't, shit. Didn't know it until I worked for Raymond years later, which I'll get into. And so, um, and my dad had waitresses and busboys and such for a typical restaurant. And um, a woman worked for my dad and it, at, it was uh, Wally Stafford's wife at the time. And and his sister. So Wally's sister and his wife at the time worked for my dad as waitresses. And um, so, you know, Jim and Wally and Dave Borders and all those guys and Gary, or not Gary, but uh, other gentlemen would be coming in for breakfast on Saturdays, going to these side jobs and such. And I'm feeding them coffee and bringing them breakfast and such. And, um, you know, just in conversation and all of a sudden just, uh, you know, what do you do? What are you listening to their conversations? And hey, I'd like to get involved in some of that. And next thing you know, I'm working with Wally side by side, working on his house, side jobs. That guy was a side job maniac, right? Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, as we, a lot of us know, we, Wally just passed away. Yeah, RIP. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Just, that. just last month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sad day for the industry there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the Stafford brothers really took me from just local little side jobs. You know, I went through high school and um, next thing you know, I, I was a uh, second. He brought Wally brought me in. He said, you know enough to be a second stage apprentice. And uh, my first job, I was working out at uh, Redondo Beach Sheraton. First job, first big job I've ever been on back in, I want to say it was uh, 80. 86 87 ish mm -hmm. and um worked for raymond it was actually a uh it was actually i had to work for a, a semester in the trade from from a trade school i was going to so i worked for raymond there and then a lot of those guys you know up and left and went to mb drywall worked for mb drywall for uh basically until they somewhat closed their doors mm -hmm. 
and um, I was working with uh, with Rodney Klein at the time, mm -hmm. and basically we paychecks basically started not working, and so we all kind of separated and. Um, I moved up to the Northern California area, followed Jim Stafford at that oh, point. Okay, got it. And there was a, a group of us that moved up to Northern California, and we went to work for, for George M. Raymond up there in Concord. Mm -hmm. um, built a lot of amazing buildings, you know, during that time. And um, let's see, that was about um, 1990, 91 ish. Mm -hmm. Rearing a recession. Yeah, and worked for Raymond until uh, 99, actually, and then KHSNS opened up their Northern California region up in Concord, mm -hmm. and as I was just, you know, going up that road, I was, you know, an apprentice, then a journeyman, and then I got the opportunity, actually in Pasadena, Jim said, hey, I want you to run this little this little tiny office TI for me on the eighth floor of this building. It scared the crap out of me, right? This my first little thing. It's probably worth $20,000 or whatever yeah. it was at the time. And, uh, you know, just with with my drive and ethics and values, I just gave it 100% every day like I was anyway. And mm -hmm. um, I just followed those gentlemen around and so the fast forward, you know, moved up north, became a foreman up there. And uh, then when I went to KHSNS, I became a general foreman in the industry and building great buildings. One of my top three in my career was the De Young Museum in Golden Gate Park. Mm. Just an amazing project. Um, so from 99 to 2000. Five, I worked for KHSNS in Northern California, and then I moved back down to Southern California in 2005. Got it. Um, interviewed with uh, Greg Stedman. He was the general superintendent at the time, mm -hmm. um, which he'll laugh when he hears. He, he basically demoted me when I moved down here. He really? said, I don't, don't think you're a project superintendent. I was a project superintendent at the time. Brought me down as a journeyman or a foreman. And, well, uh, that happened to him too. It, did it? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. He shit, man. He was uh, he was wearing his bags again. You know when when yeah. he got you know he was he was a wood carpenter. You know, building bridges and forms and so forth. And and then that's uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. His brother got him into the drywall stuff, and he freaking started down at the bottom again. Yeah. You know, but he moved up really quick because he knew how to read a tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very important. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Oh, no. And so then, um, like I said, I moved back down here in 2005. Uh, basically, tra thank God, be able to transfer, you know, my tenure in Northern California down to Southern California mm -hmm. and worked my way up to project superintendent again. And I was in that position until last, until last May of 2019. Got it. Now you're the big dog. And now I was, yeah. Got the golden hard hat. I was had the opportunity to, you know, work really close with uh, Dave Suter mm -hmm. at the time. And um, he, him and I had some very great conversations about this role and, and the executive team. And here I am sitting in front of you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so getting back to the acoustical guys. Yeah. You know, you were uh, ambitious as a kid wanting to, you know, you're in eighth grade. Yeah. You know, so you want to get this summer gig going. You yep, know, that was exactly it. These guys brought you in and you, you know, you got the feel for the field. Sure. You know, what, what it's like out there and, and it's uh, it's not glamorous by any means. No. And how long did they keep you? Did they, they keep you for a couple of summers or did you? did you? Uh, so it was just a summer summer deal but it was two summers so okay. i worked for them and i was just a scrapper you know stalker scrapper cleaning up you know probably at that point probably all sorts of asbestos ceiling grid and yeah. everything we were working on or shit the you're still here man yeah yeah <laughs> you know we went into schools they did a lot of school work at yeah. the time but yeah. it was a summer job and um you know they they would drop me back off at their at my parents restaurant because mm -hmm. the, the little shed in the back as i mentioned was their kind of like their shop mm -hmm. and my dad rented them this little thing for bringing material and equipment in and they dropped me off there and I'd 
go into the restaurant and probably work a night shift with my mom and wow and my dad and then go to school the next day and or if it was in summertime i would just rotate every day and yeah and then they would you know i'd sit home for a week you know just like it is sometimes and mm -hmm. they'd call me back and yeah it was a good uh yeah that was a you, good experience shit man you were only like 13 14 years old yeah when you were doing that yeah well i was bussing tables and serving coffee at nine and ten eleven years old yeah. in a family restaurant all my sisters and mm -hmm. you guys have a very strong work ethic in your family then we we really do i mean yeah all my all my family is like that and my i believe my son is the same way yeah, yeah. that you know if if you love your children you'll teach them how to work because they'll never starve you know sure. some people need to be taught how to work some people it sounds like you were kind of a natural at it because you had the uh the hustle you know you weren't just like gonna stay on your mom and dad's business and you, you ventured out you know like yeah. you, you went to work for these guys and it look what what kind of career it developed for you you know yeah. by getting into that that may have never happened but on the other side of the coin that's very interesting that uh gary jakes was in there and wally and jim and they would come in for breakfast so you know, it was almost kind of destiny for you to get into this industry. Yeah. You know, from the restaurant scene. Yeah. You know, that's that's uh, that's really cool stuff. So when they got you in, did you have to go through the apprenticeship program and all that stuff and go to school and everything? When uh, when the Staffords got you in? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so and you know, back in the back in the late eighties, if I recall, it was it was it was like a three or four year program. You know, yep. you were going at nights, you know, and uh, I would once go to a week tra training center in Santa Fe Springs. Yeah. Okay, so you went yeah. to that one too over in yeah. uh, uh, on Lakeland. Yep, yep, I certainly did. So that you, was uh, that was actually forty two L. Yes, that was a lather. So that's yep. how you came in as a lather. Uh, yeah, what a trip. Yeah. You know, because I know that a lot of guys um, in Orange County here, you know, you know, they have they have a training. They had a training center in um, Santa Ana that the guys would go to. But um, back in the day, the carpenters were more wood carpenters. They hadn't really they had taken drywall, but it, it wasn't full blown yet. The Lathers were still doing a lot of that stuff. So, yeah, I believe if I'm not mistaken, we shared you know, there was a lot of wood framing going on mm -hmm. in in the training center back in the t as well. Got, got it. Got it. in in uh, Santa Fe Springs. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I I always remember the low ceilings in there and framing some stuff up. And we we were all we were being trained in the old school methods. You know, on tie on metal lath, and we were still putting the stud yep. shoes on the the black studs. You know, oh yeah, <laughs> they, they, you know, and they were teaching us how to lay out radiuses and so forth, and so yeah, that was. Uh, they've come a long way, man. They and, certainly have in their training. They've yeah. come a long way. They yeah, really have. They dumped a lot of money back into it. In that, in the, during that, my apprenticeship, um, I uh, got the opportunity to become uh, apprentice of the year. Is that right? In that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we started at the uh, at the hall at the training center there, and um, you know there was a small testing, I guess criteria if you want to call it, um, through the through the training center, mm -hmm. and you know I passed that, and then um, I ended up being being asked to go to the international uh, drywall contest. It was actually in Hamilton, Ontario. This was I want to say it was eighty nine. Oh, sure. I want to say I was a maybe I think I was maybe a third or fourth stage apprentice at that time. Got it. And uh, that was a that was a great great honor to do that. And um, that's impressive. Yeah, it was it was neat. You know, I got you know golden hammers and some plaques and stuff. You know, and I believe Wally was Wally Stafford was also won the apprenticeship of the year. I'm not rec I don't recall what year that was, but mm -hmm. obviously years before that. So got it. He helped me through that as well. And yeah, it was a.